Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2026 mod career mode. This is part number 16 today for the finale of this 2026 season and some season it has been. We obviously started off the season actually fully realizing this build your own engine project and mod that we've been working towards in the previous season, putting in R&D, putting in money to build our own custom engine in partnership with Lamborghini for the new 2026 engine regulation. But building your own engine from scratch unfortunately does come with some reliability issues and something we were met with straight away in round one. After a strong start, it was a DNF for us and it was a race win for McLaren's newest driver, Liam Lawson. Alongside Piastri, the reigning world champion, Lawson immediately taking to a top team straight away. But our car was fast. The engine was good, the chassis was solid, and Pierre Gasly showed that off in round number two with a race win, whilst we suffered a jammed gear. And even when we were on for a race win in round three, things just weren't going our way. A DNF from the race lead, bitterly disappointing, and adulation for Fernando Alonso, who had moved to Red Bull Ford for this season, for this very thing, to win races and maybe go for that elusive third Drivers' Championship. Eventually, though, success would come our way. We became the master of Monaco and went on an unprecedented run for career mode standards with three wins in a row, from Monaco to Silverstone to the Red Bull Ring. But as quickly as we gain momentum in the season, it was taken away immediately the next race. Tensions rise at Portimao. Myself and Pierre Gasly tripping over one another. And then a bonkers glitch crash at Monza to kick off the weekend. But we still came through for a fourth win at the Italian Grand Prix for our Italian brand Lamborghini. Becoming the more superior Italian brand in Formula 1 it would seem this season. But as I said, tensions were there and they just continue to rise between myself and Pierre Gasly. After such a successful partnership in the previous season, cracks started to form and we started to trip over one another. And unfortunately, another DNF the following episode meant back-to-back -back zero points finishes. And all the while, Gasly would come good again and win the Singapore Grand Prix. Things were getting pretty darn close. Lawson, Alonso, Gasly and myself all vying for the championship lead. We would punch back at the next race at the Japanese Grand Prix and take our fifth win of the season. The most wins we've had in a single season on this game entirely. But Qatar would bring drama, crashing with Alonso's teammate and forfeiting a load of points. But all the while, Fernando Alonso had spun twice in three races, showing the pressure was even getting to the veteran of this sport. Pierre Gasly went on to win another race in Qatar and bring himself back into contention but in the second last episode last summer at Jeddah it was a 1-2 for McLaren the reigning world champion won again in F1 and took the victory Lawson with second place Alonso bringing home a third place and myself after suffering with some engine penalties recovering for a late P6 to set up a dramatic championship deciding finale in the driver's title and in the constructor's title. In the constructor's championship, only 11 points between McLaren and ourselves at AAR Lamborghini. And in the driver's title, perhaps we individually can feel a bit more comfortable in that situation as we lead Lawson by 11 points, Fernando Alonso by 14, and Gasoline Piastri level 20 points back. But mathematically, this is a five-way championship fight. We have a sprint race coming up before the full Brazilian Grand Prix. So things still may change going into that final full GP race. But uh, it's all on the line today. And it's been a super competitive season all round. The fact that we've won five races out of 15 and we aren't like leading the championship by a ridiculous amount just shows one, the consistency of our rivals, especially in that first part of the season, whilst we were dealing with our engine gremlins of this, uh, you know, build your own engine mod and getting through those engine development hurdles. But, you know, we've come back through strong and I think we've had a very controlled, measured approach in the last few 
episodes, trying to make the most of situations, and especially last episode, having to come back through the grid from the back to P6 was a very solid drive. You saw there, we just purchased our final few little upgrades on the chassis side of things that we can do to uh, try and prepare for next season, because over the winter break, there will be a regulation change and a reset to the entire chassis side of the R&D tree, but... I think most teams around us all preparing for that as hardly anyone upgrading since guitar. But this just really does show how close things are on paper, car to car. And that's why the drivers are making the biggest difference. But it wouldn't be a season finale at Brazil without a little bit of precipitation, would it? We've got a weather forecast, a very interesting one. That seems like uh, there might be some rain potential in quali. Maybe even some rain potential in the sprint. But very much so, some rain on the way at the end of the full Grand Prix race. 90% chance of rain. Heavy rain I think that was at the end of Sunday's Grand Prix. So if this wasn't tense enough already, knowing that there's going to be that curveball of rain right at the end of the race you know, where you want to settle down and lock in a position that you've maybe got to, you know, to secure a championship the rain could just ruin or make your entire day. So that's going to, well that's to come and that's going to be something we're going to have to get through everyone's going to be in the same boat uh, no pun intended but first and foremost we have to get through Friday qualifying and set ourselves up as well as we can for the sprint on Saturday our car in Q1 at least seemed to be pretty strong uh, you know up there in P2 Audi looked very strong McLaren use your kind of consistency of being in the top five Red Bull again look a little bit on the back foot as they have been in recent episodes and Pierre Gasly well he didn't go that quick in Q1 at least maybe lost a little bit of focus after a poor race in Jeddah that ended with him having to make an extra pit stop but let's see how Q2 goes this is crucial to get into the top 10 shootout and when you've got other teams like Audi and Ferrari pretty darn quick some surprises could come up and a surprise has come up it is another blow to Fernando Alonso's title hopes he is knocked out he's out in P12 myself and Gasly are through he came good the two McLarens are through as are the two Audis Ferraris and an Alfa Romeo Haas of Felipe Dragovic, one of the home favourites, the Brazilian driver. He was probably a key man knocking out Fernando Alonso there. So Alonso's luck is really running out when he needs it the most in this title fight. It's going to be a long, long race weekend and he's going to need maybe a little bit of a miracle to really make a mark on it. So really my focus is on Lawson, you know, even Gasly, he's up there. He's on provisional pole position for the sprint at the moment. We're second place. The first run wasn't so great. The second one we found just over over one tenth of a second to go provisional pole then and then we do our final runs but you know Gasly looks quick but you know he's, he's quite a far amount of points away from us 20 points is a lot to bridge he needs a disaster for me and Lawson so really my eyes are on the Kiwi driver in the Papaya car as we go fastest again but then by the time we got to our inlap and coming in to park up to finish the session Everyone seemingly found a ridiculous amount of time. I thought that was a pretty solid lap, you know, a 106 dead. Gasly goes into the 105s and gets pole position back for the sprint. Piastri second, Schumacher third, Lawson, our nearest rival, ahead of us in P4. And we have to be relegated down to P6. I really thought we could have been on for at least minimum a front row start for the sprint. And I actually thought after doing four consecutive laps, you know, two in a row, two in a row, that were all going purple and getting me into the top of the session. I thought I was, yeah, I was pretty confident, but as has been the case a lot of times this season, Gasly and others just have pulled out that extra mileage over one lap in Q3 where it matters. But being here in Sao Paulo, we have a sprint race to set the full grid for Sunday. So we can make up for this and we can try and start ahead of Lawson for the full Grand Prix tomorrow as we go to five red lights. It's the sprint here in Brazil. Lawson a bit slow off the line, Schumacher as well, Piastri, everyone has had a shocking start apart from, of course, Pierre Gasly, our teammate, and all of a sudden, we are 1-2 in this race, Gasly has opted for the medium
Team Compound Attire, as has Piastri. The rest of us on softs, how that's going to play out, we're going to have to see through the, the, the duration of this 12-lap sprint. They're going for durability at the end of the race. I'm going for a quick start, and a quick start we have gotten as we gain four positions off the line. It's uh, pr pretty much a dream start. It could have only gotten better if Gasly also bogged down from pole position as he did quite a few times in recent episodes. But yeah, it's a one-two for the team. And uh, now, whilst our soft tyres are fresh and still not worn out, let's try and close and attack Gasly because those mediums of his are only going to get better as we go on through this sprint. And also, we need to, to get away from Lawson just to cover ourselves off and feel comfortable. Gasly doesn't go defensive, leaves the door open on the inside. We jockey for position. He's up broken. It's a little bit better on the right-hand side. We're going to be neck and neck as we go down the crest and climb again as we go into the heart of Sector 2. Lawson has now closed up, so desperate measures trying to go round the outside and then get to the apex. Gasly comes across and he taps us wide. He invites Lawson in and he's remained in first place. Of course we have in the finale. Myself and Pierre Gasly have come together a little bit. It's not any kind of uh, damage to either of us, but it's still unfortunate as we're nearly down to P4 even because Schumacher had a little nibble at our rear end as well and made contact with us as well uh, subsequently after that one. But yeah, Gasly mid-apex choosing to turn left into a right-hander interesting one to be honest I know we did squeeze him a little bit but uh, he's cut the curb and then moved out left to try and uh, get the elbow out but he's done it a bit too forcefully in my opinion one too many times in this second half of the season on board from Lawson getting a great view of this and what well, you can see he's turning right he's actually over the white line and then turns back left into uh, the, the moment he's meant to be turning the most right in the corner he's turning left into me it's just it's just uncanny how many times he's been doing it in the second part of the season as we now go back to the live action and we're watching Fernando Alonso in the Red Bull Ford remember knocked out in Q2 and if he wants any chance to still be in this title fight properly come Sunday he needs to get a move on ahead Verstappen trying to attack Piastri and look at that three wide between the Red Bull Audi and Alfa Romeo Haas poor chair has overtaken the Alfa Romeo Haas at the same time as Alonso so Alonso gains a position and immediately loses another one and stays put in P10. It's slow progress for him so far, but we've only had three laps and we've already had so much action in this sprint. And three laps in towards the uh, end of lap three onto lap four, our rear wing has failed. We've got no DRS the very lap it's activated. So that's brilliant. We're within one second of Lawson, but I've got no DRS to open up to actually allow me to gain. So that is going to add to our pain here. And Lawson is maybe going to get away from us in second place, which is not ideal in terms of the starting grid for tomorrow. Alonso finally up into P9, having overtaken poor chair. And his Audi teammate, Carlos Sainz, getting very aggressive with the moves there, overtaking Piastri for P6. And I think, you know, the Ferraris and the the Audis, they're going to be the spanner in the works that myself and Lawson and the other title fighters are just not going to want or need. And speaking of, well, Schumacher overtakes us. This lack of DRS is really hurting us because we've fallen out of one second anyway of Lawson. So even if our rear wing was working, I don't have DRS anymore on Lawson. So he's actually closing up to Gasly. That would be the worst scenario for us if you overtake Gasly and he's on pole position for tomorrow's race. But despite the lack of DRS, we are fighting back against Mick Schumacher some real decent pace actually just with the battery use on the straight but you can now see a little bit of wobble on the rear end I think these ties are starting to creep out a little bit as now Schumacher and Norris come through the Red Bull we know has been so good in acceleration terms and he's following a very quick Ferrari we have to go side by side with Norris and give him some room to work with and that has now put Schumacher out of the one second range and that matters because by lap 10 my DRS now is actually working but it's maybe a little bit too late for that because now we're just busy fighting with Lando Norris it's the wrong Red Bull Ford right up here but we're having a scrap nonetheless with him to try and just maximize our grid slot for tomorrow and limit the damage to Lawson in terms of the points here today but look at Piastri coming through could it be a three-way fight here for P4 down to P6 behind us Norris and Piastri now side by side that will maybe give us a bit of breathing room to push away and just solidify this P4 Norris on the outside, Piastri on the inside, two former McLaren teammates, Lando Norris now ahead for Red Bull Ford in P5. Meanwhile
Meanwhile, Alonso up to P8. He is slowly making his way up the order, but we've only got one lap left of this sprint. And on to the last lap, Norris going for it again on the outside of Turn 1. We squeeze him out, get the elbow out, and Piastri comes through at the open space. And now Norris is so slow that he's backed himself into his old pal Carlos Sainz and his teammate Fernando Alonso. It's going to be three wide, and it's the Spaniard on the inside for Red Bull that's going to make a double pass, I think. What a move for Fernando. Fernando Alonso, a crucial one to get him up into P6. That's a much better grid position than the P12 he would have got from qualifying. Gasly wins the sprint. Lawson second place. We have to settle for P4. So Lawson and Gasly will gain points on us. Piastri and Alonso lose out to us. So uh, even though Alonso's done all that hard work, he's still effectively lost out in the championship. So things are going to look a little bit closer, though, between myself and Liam Lawson, which is why, you know, yes, Gasly's there. Piastri, Alonso, they're all there, mathematically still in it. But really, I'm getting the vibe. As it was, you know, remember the first part of the season when I was winning the three wins in a row, I, I was saying that it seems like it's me versus Lawson and there's some others who are trying their best to get into the fight. And that's exactly how the championships ended. Myself and Lawson now going into the final race, the full Grand Prix, nine points apart. Alonso remains in third place, but he's now 16 points back. Gasly's now only 17 points back in P4 and Piastri, 21 points back. He could still win the championship if all... All the, all the rest of us had the disaster, but it's highly unlikely. So this is why I think it is just between myself and the Kiwi driver, Lawson. Um, I think Alonso and Gasly, look, looking at how quick Alonso was in that sprint, obviously Gasly won the sprint. I think we need to be wary of them in terms of on track. They could be an issue. You know, we, we know Gasly has been an issue for us on track consistently in this second part of the season. You know, we saw it in Japan, the, the pressure Alonso put on us that guy when he's in the zone is so rapid and he was rapid in that sprint so those two could play a part in the championship fight still you know in terms of blocking or you know getting a position that we don't want them to get you know on either myself or Lawson individually in the constructors we grow the gap from 11 to 13 points to McLaren so feeling a bit better about that I, I really do feel like we can seal that out definitely you know the way Gasly drove he's going to be quick clearly in the full race so I'm confident we can win that third constructor Constructors Championship, but in terms of the Drivers Championship, it's still up in the air. Lawson just beat us fair and square in the sprint. We need to do better in the full race. Can we get that elusive second Drivers Championship? Well, it's time to find out. Let's go to the race. <laughs> It all comes down to this one final Grand Prix. We're starting off in sunny conditions, but we know the forecast is for some heavy rain by the end of this one. This sounds like it's going to be an absolute classic Brazilian Grand Prix finale to an F1 season. And uh, what, a, what a fitting way it would be with a bit of drama at the end here for this 2026 season. It's been a thriller. It's been so competitive. And uh, here we go then. Gasly P1, Lawson ahead of us, the nearest man in the championship. Second place directly ahead of us. We line up in P4. Oh, it's showtime. Can we get that second driver's championship? Let's find out as we go to five red lights to the Brazilian Grand Prix. The final race in 2026 is upon us. Lights out and away we go. And Gasly has had a horrendous start from pole position. And it's the two nearest championship protagonists. Now side by side, we lock up a little bit into turn one. Lawson gets into first place. We're in second. Alonso up to third. So he's had a very quick start. And that's quite, that's quite nice to see, to be fair. Quite poetic. The top four in this race are the top four in the championship in a slightly different order. And of course, Lawson would love for me to fall down the order and for him to remain in first place. He hasn't won a race since the first round of the season, but he's leading the way by eight tenths of a second. I've got Alonso right behind me looking very rapid, and he's chosen to start on the soft compound of tyre. Myself and Gasly opting for the medium, the same for Lawson as well. So 
Alonso's strategy is trying to go balls to the wall early on in this Grand Prix and then seeing what happens later on with the rain, I guess. But uh, we're going for longevity, looking to make that stop onto hard tyres and then go to the wet period, I think, if the rain is actually going to be on the way because the forecast could be wrong. It has been wrong in, before in the past on F1 games. But at the moment, as I run out of battery up the hill, Alonso is already going for it and he's actually sent it to the inside. He cuts across and perfectly parks his car. There was nowhere to defend that. I tried to outbreak him, but his rear right tyre was literally in my face right in front of my car. So we had to just slow it down. And Alonso's into second. At the moment, this would work for Lawson. You know, 34 laps to go. If it ended like this, though, Lawson would be crowned the world champion. But I'm not getting worried just yet because we know Alonso. He's quick because he's on softs. Eventually, those softs are going to wear out, as we found out in our sprint race. So even though he looks quick now, maybe even goes and overtakes Lawson with how quick he is. That works for us. And if he doesn't overtake Lawson, well, I'm confident that at some point he's going to start wearing out those tyres. And I will come back towards him and I can re-overtake him for second place. And then we'll still be fine. And then we've just got the small measure of the rest of the Grand Prix to go. That four on to five, we're riding on board with Fernando Alonso. And he's going for it. What did I say? He's going to try and get P1 and that works in our favour. They're side by side. Alonso on the left. Lawson on the right. They're going to be neck and neck through the centre S exit and Lawson is down to P2 but they've both lost time to me so we're reeling them in. We're within one second of them now so the next lap will have DRS but they continue to scrap and Lawson comes back at Fernando Alonso. He knows what's at stake. He needs first place and he needs me to be behind Alonso in P3 so that was a crucial move for Liam Lawson but we are are now fully here back behind Fernando Alonso and already I feel like he's a bit slower because of that tyre we're on the softs. Meanwhile behind Gasly is in a Ferrari sandwich but Verstappen's actually pulled away in no man's land by himself in P4. Gasly not looking too quick. Definitely not as quick as he did in the sprint. The heavier fuel may be playing a factor in that as he leads a train from P5 down to P8. Piastri nowhere near anywhere where he needs to be in P9. It looks like the reigning world champion will very much be saying goodbye to that title by the end of this race and can we try and book in a position that would secure that dethroning here on lap six early on but what did I say we have caught back up to Alonso we're in DRS and I feel like we can definitely re-overtake him for second place and then well of course I would like to try and seal out this championship in the best possible way so can we then go and chase after Liam Lawson but first we need to get this job done on Fernando Alonso and we have done so on the left hand side easy DRS move in the end as I think very much so his tyres are wearing out lap 6 on to 7 Alonso he's 1.2 seconds back he is completely worn out those softs and we have gone for the race lead on Lawson big dive down the inside to get into the lead and get a hold of this race but Lawson is going to keep us honest and keep at it. Alonso's come back at us now and Alonso is going for the move on Lawson himself and he might go for even more as it's a massive dive bomb from the Spaniard and he tries to get two places for one. He actually tried to go from third to first there and meanwhile, oh, Lawson's locked up. Lawson on the outside of that corner, he's locked up. So this Stappen all of a sudden is up into third place. This is a disaster for Lawson. This is great for us. But now we've got a very aggressive and rapid Alonso knocking on the door again. A little bit of contact as we're cutting this very fine, I must say. Once again, the AI being very aggressive as we have to take some avoiding action to not hit Alonso on that exit curb. And that's going to give him the run to get into first place. We've got, we're the ones with DRS though. So we're going to come back at him on the inside. Try and run him wide, basically. Get the elbow out to actually keep this P1. And in the end, he has to settle for second place. Verstappen is still third, though. Lawson closed back up, but that's not ideal for him down in P4. As you can guess it, once again... Oh my god. Fernando Alonso playing a very dangerous game there in the turn one break zone. That could have been front wing off. That could have been tire off. That was 
way too close for comfort. I think we're going to maybe have to take it a little bit more cautiously. You know, Alonso, he can go and run away and win this race. We don't need to be winning this race as long as we stay ahead of Lawson, as long as he's not going to get the nine points on us. So maybe we try and change tactic a little bit and maybe not be so aggressive. But it's hard not to want to try and maximize this race as we squeeze Verstappen to the inside. And Verstappen takes a page out of Alonso's book and just still kamikaze dives me to the inside. These guys are not blinking. Like, usually, I feel like they're back out of it when I squeeze to the inside, but they are not blinking. And this was my cue to come in for an earlier stop on the hards. We were going to come in anyway around lap 13, 14. So we've just come one lap earlier. It's not really much of a difference to our strategy. I was always going to come in around this time for the hard compound attire because I am banking on that rain coming so we can afford to come in this early for hards i say this early i reckon the, re the rest of the medium tar runners will be in within the next three laps you would say but we know how good this 19 car is on the hards you know we just got overtaken by verstappen we cut it a bit close with him a bit too close with alonso definitely so that could have ended very badly so this is better for us to be in clean air somewhat clean air as uh, Hulkenberg rudely interrupts me right in front of me, the Gulf Williams. Can we just overtake him and then we will be in a bucket of clean air ahead of him. You know, 5.4 seconds of it to uh, Esteban Ocon. Round the outside we go and then we've got a lot of room to work with and that clean air is going to allow us to get a massive undercut going on Verstappen, on Alonso. But we now need to thread through this traffic. We've already gained a lot of time by closing up those five seconds to Ocon, but this now has to be a military operation of cutting through these guys so quickly and we're doing just that because all of these guys you can see they're, they're actually on the softs and this is lap 15 so they've gone longer than the sprint distance and you saw how I was struggling on the softs in the sprint so these guys must be feeling these tires must be feeling so second hand for them so that's why we're able to out traction them so darn quickly DRS open on Sonoda in the Aston Martin Honda, gaining on the silver arrow of Leclerc as we dive it to the outside. Little bit of a pinch, maybe a bit too much of a pinch to make a little bit of contact with Leclerc, but no harm, no done. And uh, we are up into P10. So we're back into the point. No one's come in yet, though. So it's been three laps. So I would say they surely will be coming in very much on this lap, I would think. Or very, very soon. It's Felipe Drakovic has spun it. The Alfa Romeo has directly ahead of us is spun it. Not for the first time. He spun it last episode, remember? In Jeddah. Ah, oh my god. No. No, 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 no. The red flag's out. The red flag's out and no one had made a pit stop in front of us. So they're all going to get a free stop. This is absolutely not played into our hands. This is played directly into Lawson's hands. Even Gasly and Alonso might be licking their lips now at this uh, scenario. And it's because Felipe Drogovic, for the second time in a row, has spun the car. And that, that apparently is a red flag, even though, unlike in Jeddah, he's nowhere near the racing line. But, um, oh my god... That's just that well, typical, of course, of course. That, that's just our luck. That is just our luck. So I make a pit stop, and four laps later, there's a red flag that just gives a free pit stop to everyone else. Great. So we're going to go on to another set, a new set of hards. That's going to definitely take us to the wet period, because look at the, the forecast on the top there. You know, it's going to be intermediates, you know, about two-thirds of the way or one-third of the way into this, this next stint, basically, to the end of the race, basically. It does look like it's going to dry up again, though, by the end of it. So it might be a bit of a weird transition from dry to into to full wet, back to dry, maybe, maybe by the end of this one, but... ah. Oh. This is annoying. So Lawson, Alonso, Gasly, all of them, they're all going to get this free stop and change onto hards and they're going to be well ahead of us. Well ahead of us because we start this race now in P9. Lawson is on the front row with Verstappen. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And for the second time in this race, it's lights out and away we go. It's a very slow start for Piastri. Albon, Lawson as well though into turn one. Look at that. Three wide. Ooh we narrowly, narrowly escaped making some uh, contact with Fernando Alonso's rear wing as we were locking up ourselves 
So clearly all of our hard tyres, or mediums in the case of some people, are very cold. But no! Oh no, how's that happened though? Lawson? What? He was in P4! How's he ended up in P1? He's miles ahead! Absolute miles! This is a disaster! This is the worst possible thing that could be happening right now. We're P7 with all these <laughs> with all this pretty quick traffic ahead of us of Gasly, Alonso, Poor Chair, Verstappen, Norris, and look at that mini map. It's uh, Lawson miles away in the lead. No one's going to catch him. Not even I could probably catch him once we hopefully make our way through this traffic. How did that even ha happen? Because he actually had such a poor start. It was going to be the Ferrari leading. Norris on the inside of Gasly. Lawson then... Oh, okay. Verstappen locked up and Lawson just sent it. He got very lucky. Verstappen effectively helped him out there by blocking Norris and Gasly. And Lawson just launched it to the inside and got that P1. Meanwhile, Alonso, he was up there on the second row, but he had a very poor start and got bogged down fighting poor chair. And he's, well, he was still fighting poor chair as they went down the crest. Meanwhile, it's Norris versus Verstappen. Now, I want to point out, by the way, Norris, he had a grid penalty for the full Grand Prix. So this is an unbelievable turnaround for the Brit. He's ended up being from like P18 to now he's in the top four fight legitimately because of the red flag now helping him out as we now go back to the live racing action and looking to make a quick swift overtake on Pierre Gasly. The last thing I need is a fight or an incident with Pierre Gasly, okay? I'm over it, okay? We've had enough of them this entire season to the inside. He's a little bit offset and thankfully that's going to be that P6 booked in, but we've still got so much work to do. We've got to get Alonso, poor chair, Norris and Verstappen. Lawson's winning the, leading this race right now. If he wins it, we have to be in second place. If we're in third or lower, we lose the championship. So we have got to make four overtakes. That's not an option to not do four overtakes coming up. And can we make two for one? I wonder here as we go to the inside. Poor chair in the middle. Alonso goes wide. Poor chair loses the back end. And we actually have gone through for the double pass on the Audi, on the Red Bull Ford. We're up into P4 now. It's lap 21 though. And it's looking a bit overcast. And immediately on the next lap, the rain has started to fall. This is an ideal because I we have had no wet running at Brazil. We haven't had a wet race for a while, to be honest. I don't know how this car is going to perform around Sao Paulo in intermediate, in full wet conditions. And we still have two passes to make. We have to overtake Norris and Verstappen. Lap 23, the track is getting damper and damper, and we have closed up to Norris. In these damp conditions, the changeable conditions, we have actually got a bit of pace, it would seem, over the Red Bull and Ferrari. What I'm worried about is, once we switch to Inters, will they have the advantage? So many times that has been the case with the AI on this game. They are very good in wet conditions. In changeable conditions, that's where you can play around. You can have a bit of an advantage. You can be a bit daring on the throttle. And that's what we're trying to do mid-corner. Breaking that bit later. Closing in in the corners. And Norris is going for the move on Verstappen from right to left. If they're fighting, this could help us out. But we're now locking up into turn one. And we have to be careful. I need to close up to them, but if we make a mistake, if we lock up and go straight on or spin it, it's absolute curtains. So we need to be careful about this. But I'm I'm thinking it's already time for Inters now, lap 24. And my team agree with me, because even though I said box in this lap, my engineer then went on again about boxing in this lap again. So confirmation, even my engineer thinks it's time for intermediates. I mean, the track looks wet enough for it, and we're all still here on the dry tyres as there's a little bit of a rear end loss, and we lose a couple of tenths to Norris, so we won't be overtaking him uh, on this lap at least, and it's going to be after the round of pit stop. So here we go then. I guess it's time to find out if this car works well around Sao Paulo on intermediates, because Lawson in, Verstappen's in, and Norris is in, we are in, and a few others continue, including my teammate, I guess he was forced to stay out because uh, he doesn't want to double stack, but uh, it's so wet out there, I think they're going to lose a lot of time, so it really is going to be just us four out in the front, I think, all alone, it's going to be Lawson leading the way, Verstappen second, Norris third, and myself in fourth, once all those people on the top of your screen make a pit stop, Alonso stayed out, Gasly, Sainz, Sonoda, Russell, Ocon, so so those top six, they're going to be pretty slow, you know. So there's even a chance of like another 
safety car. Like, if one of them makes a mistake, that well could be another safety car. Could even be another red flag. Is there more drama to come here in Sao Paulo as we watch on and focus on Liam Lawson in P7? Effectively will be P1 by the time everyone comes in for the Inters. I mean, what an amazing drive it was off the red flag restart. I, I thought initially he was going backwards and he was going backwards until that kamikaze dive into turn one. And at the moment he's doing everything he needs to do to win his first ever F1 Drivers' Championship. But you know what? He's getting held up quite a lot behind Esteban Ocon, who is on the dry tyres. Look at them all skating about the rear end, stepping out, and Lawson's being held. He's being held. Verstappen's closed up. Lawson is eventually going to get through, but the damage has been done. Verstappen is right up the McLaren's gearbox. Could the Ferrari do us a solid here and overtake Lawson? No, not quite. Into turn one. Lawson remains in first. Verstappen second, though, right up his gearbox. Please, Verstappen, please. Okay, I've been very sympathetic to your, your struggles the entire season in your new Ferrari team. I'm begging you. I want to see you get that first win for Ferrari. And it can be now. It can be in the final race. Please, come on, help us out. Meanwhile, Alonso comes out of the pits in P5 miles back. So that is very much Fernando Alonso's champion. Uh, about done with. The same for Piastri in P10 as he's three wide with Drugovic and Schumacher. And by the way, Gasly's had an even worse second half of this race. He's down in P14. Um... Uh, to be honest now, I need to go and overtake Norris and Verstappen, not just for the Drivers' Championship. I also need to do it for the sake of the Constructors' Championship because Piastri's scoring one point, Gasly's scoring zero. So it's really going to be between myself and Lawson to decide the Constructors as well. So we're not only racing for myself, we are racing for this entire team that we own and for the entirety of Lamborghini in Formula 1. Lap 26, 10 laps to go. Can we overtake our fellow compatriot Lando Norris we go from the left to right Norris gives us a squeeze and a half what on earth was that man that was way too aggressive we hold it through though we hold our nerve uh, in the middle of the apex and we actually still make the overtake but I checked my uh, heads up display because I actually thought there may have been damage there that could have been so much worse Norris coming across us in the break zone but we're here now P3 one more position to go lap 29 seven laps to go in this race Lawson P1 would be winning the championship if it ends like this we need to overtake Verstappen and he's struggling that rear end twitch in the middle of the center S the Ferrari is doable we can overtake him we're going to go to the left hand side plenty of battery use but Verstappen squeezes us we lock up and we narrowly, narrowly avoid hitting the back of Verstappen. We had a double lock up there after that little squeeze from the Dutchman. That could have been absolute curtains for us if we had gone any quicker into that corner. We need to be cautious. It's a real balancing act. I want to be aggressive. I want to get the P2 because that's the championship right there. Verstappen right now is the one who stands in our way of winning a second world championship. But he is clearly desperate to keep position, to score well, to end the season on a high in what has been a very tumultuous season for him and Ferrari. So he is being very aggressive. And of course, we know how good Verstappen is in these conditions as well. He's not an easy driver to pass in the wet as we go for a move. But we're just a bit too overcautious on the brakes. And even still, we still lock up there on the front left. I actually broke so much earlier than you usually would. And Verstappen was able just to cover off the inside. But even then, I locked up. This is getting nerv nervy now. We've got five laps left. Can we do this? We close up again, but we just don't have the confidence on the braking. And there's a few little glimpses of oversteer moments where we're losing the back end. Lap 32, four laps to go. So early on the brakes, Verstappen has just spooked me into not wanting to go too late onto them because I'm just wary of going straight on. But we're pushing him through the exit, this NRS. He's had a bit of a poor exit, actually. And can we now go for that pass, that final nail in the coffin for us to get the championship on the outside? Verstappen defends the inside line. We're on the curb. Verstappen gets back into second place. But we have another bite at the cherry because we get on the power early. We use the back battery up the hill to the inside we ease the car through and we're up into second place 
finally, after like, what, four or five laps of agony of trying to get Verstappen, we finally overtaken him, and it wasn't easy there. Didn't get it done where I thought we would. We have to do it in a very uh, weird place down the crest, just up the hill into sector two. In lap 33, movement going on behind. This is Norris overtaking Verstappen. So having overtaken the Ferrari, he's now dropped down out of the podium. Norris gets on to P3, and we go on to the last lap of the Grand Prix. No sign of the rain letting up. If this race continued, it will be full wet. So look at the amount of droplets falling. But we've done enough. Lawson, he's led the way ever since that red flag restart and all the pressure has been on us to deliver, to overtake all those cars to get the position we need minimum to win this championship. And we've done just that. We can breathe a sigh of relief. Lawson will win the race, but we will win this second Drivers World Championship. And with that, another year of Formula One draws to a close and a new World Drivers Champion is declared. Another entry added to that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers. We have done it. We've taken our second Drivers World Championship on this game. We've taken three Constructors Championships now and... The first time of asking, we have won a championship with Lamborghini, with our own custom engine. Worth it. All that pain that we had in season three of this F123 career mode, you know, building that engine, putting the R&D points in, putting the money in, it's been worth it. Because this season, we've ended up with five wins and both championship it was a really closely contested one but we finished the championship two points ahead of lawson it really came down to that second place that was it that's why the pressure was so on but we've not buckled and we've done it and we've taken it across the line guys i hope you have enjoyed this final episode of this season it was a real Real classic one at Brazil, I think, with the rain, the, the drama, the red flag, everything. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Not only of this episode, but the entire 2026 season we've just had. And if you're on your hands here, do get subscribed because we will return with the next season eventually. But before then, just a little teaser. I've got a little different sort of plan for the next week or so when it comes to career mode videos, but you'll have to keep your eyes peeled for that. Till then, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.